Tomorrow, April 21, 2021, many of the new FAA Part 107 rules go into effect. What does this mean to you as a Part 107 drone pilot? Well, stick around, I'll let you know. I think by now we all know that there have been some significant changes made to the Part 107 rulings for remote pilots like ourselves. And I wanted to take a few minutes and just kind of outline what's changing tomorrow and what may change a little further down the line. So let's start. What's the first one? Well, the first one is flying over people. Now, you all know that right now, prior to the changes, it was the illegal force to fly over people that were not involved in the project. And that meant the pilot, the visual observer, any technical people, anything, anybody actually involved with flying the drone. Didn't include things like flying over a wedding party. Those people were not involved in the project. But this is changing, and they're giving us the ability to fly over people, but there are some restrictions, and there are some significant new categories that we need to take a look at. So let's look at some of these. The first one is category one. This is for drones weighing less than 0.55 pounds. Well, that's interesting. That's kind of the toy drone market. But in addition, they cannot have any exposed rotating parts that could cause lacerations. Well, we've got four motors. So my interpretation of that is there's some sort of guard that's needed. And we don't have any specifics on that. So I don't know if prop guards are sufficient, if you need a whole cage, or how they're going to address that. So we'll have to wait to see what happens in the future on that one. The next one we have is category two, a little more significant. That's our drones weighing between 0.55 pounds and 55 pounds. And the comment they make here is that if it hits somebody, it cannot transmit more than 11 foot pounds of kinetic energy upon impact. Uh, we don't really know what that's gonna be yet. And it cannot have any safety defects. Now, what about category three? Well, for category three, it's got a limit of 25 foot-pounds of kinetic energy upon impact. Still, no rotating parts that can cause lacerations. Same issue with that. And then for Category 4, this actually requires an airworthiness certificate from the FAA. So that'll be a pretty high, high-rated drone right there. And in the future, the manufacturers will actually have to put a label on your drone saying it's either CAT1, CAT2, CAT3, or CAT4 certified. So right now we don't have that. But the big kicker is it must have remote ID included. And of course, nothing we have right now has remote ID. So until that actually comes into effect, we still can't really fly over people. When we talk about operations over people, there are some eligibility requirements. So let me go through those two. Mention I mentioned the remote ID, but for category one, you still can't have sustained flight over open air assemblies unless the operation meets the requirements the FAA establishes at some point. Same thing will apply with CAT 2, and remember we gotta have remote ID. Same thing applies to CAT 3 for open air assemblies. And we're talking about concerts, any kind of big gathering like that. CAT 4, we talked about the airworthiness certificate, so we know that. Also in CAT 4, must have maintenance, preventive maintenance, alterations, or inspections performed in accordance with the directives from the FAA. Also remember under the old rule, we couldn't operate over moving vehicles. Well, the new rule does allow us in certain situations to do that. First of all, must remain within or over a closed or restricted access site where everybody knows what's going on. Or if it's not an enclosed site, you can't maintain sustained flight over the traffic. I like to use I-4 as an example here in Tampa between Tampa and Orlando. That traffic's always stopped, right? So we can fly over them. Of course, that's just a joke. How about operations at night? That's a new one for us. You know, currently we can only fly between 30 minutes before sunrise to 30 minutes after sunset with no night flying involved. The new rule does allow us to fly at night, but we still have to have anti-collision lights visible for three statute miles, and we have to be certified to fly at night. So how do we get that certification? Well, supposedly they were gonna have an online course just for nighttime flying. 
Haven't seen that one yet. But that data is included in the recurrent knowledge test. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And if you take that, you can get your nighttime certification. But there will be many things to consider too. Still have to have visual line of sight. That'll be a problem at night, right? So we won't be able to fly as far. How about the recurrent knowledge test? Well, it used to be we had to sit for a new exam every two years and pay another 150 or 160 bucks for that. But with the new exam, they will allow us to do an online recurrent training every 24 months. And I went through that last week. My license hadn't expired and was not expiring anytime soon, but I wanted to go ahead and sit for it and get all the updates. And it's about a two hour commitment online to go through this. Got some interim exams, a final exam. And as long as you pass that, you've got your new certificate. And it also includes that nighttime component I was talking about. So not a big deal and, and certainly a lot easier to get your recurrent requirements. Now a new one for inspection, testing, and demonstration of compliance. We have to be able to provide this information on request about our drone. Now, if we go back to effective dates for all this, let's talk about remote ID. Of course, right now, none of our aircraft have remote ID. And what the ruling says is that in 18 months from March 16th, which is September of 2022, all manufacturers who sell drones that meet in our category must have remote ID installed. That's 18 months. Then the following year, September of the following year, 2023, all of us that have existing drones must have remote ID installed. Now, the theory being is that the manufacturers are going to develop some remote ID modules that we can retrofit to our drones to meet this, this qualification. Now, the good thing about that is that for people like myself that have a fleet of drones, I actually only have to buy one of those remote ID modules and I can move it between aircraft that way. So that's pretty cool for me. So those are the highlights. You know, there's a lot of things that still have to be clarified. And as things become more clear, I'll put out future videos and give you more detail on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And if you want to share with your friends, please do. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to submit one of your videos to me for me to include in a future video, please do so and I'd be happy to do it. And as always, thank you for watching.